Senior positions in banking have traditionally largely been held by men, but in Cambodia, a New Zealand educated woman is breaking the mould. At just 35 years old, Gia Sarai is a Director General of the Central Bank here in Phnom Penh. Sarai manages 150 staff in five different divisions at the bank, and she's also passionate about delivering financial services to Cambodia's poor. Dear Sarai, it's lovely to meet you. Thanks very much for talking to us today. Thank you for allowing me to speak with you. You're a really inspiring example of a woman who's still only in her mid-30s and here you are as the Director General of the National Bank of Cambodia. What path did you take to get to this position? I did join the Central Bank uh, quite early on. I, I joined right after I finished my uh, uh, studies. And I was coming at a time when there were restructurings going on in the banking system and the bank wanted to strengthen its banking supervision function. So I was placed in that supervision department. And I've seen the banking system evolved uh, since then and I, I was able to get promotions as it goes on. You did a Bachelor of Commerce at Victoria University, you graduated in 2002. What can you gain from an overseas education in a country like New Zealand? I think being exposed to um, a de developed country like New Zealand, um, I think it, it's, it's a, there's a lot of eye-opening experiences to learn from. The way people live, I mean even the traffic on the road is something that you probably won't learn in university or school but you see how neat and, and, and how, how people respect the uh, traffic rules and so on and so forth. I mean, that is something that a country like Cambodia, if you've seen the traffic here, um, can learn from. In terms of university experience, having been in a system that is um, quite strict in terms of uh, um, curriculums and syllabus and so on, when I experienced the uh, New Zealand uh, education system, it was heaven for me. Um, I remember going to school about three days a week and then I would have about three hours a day of class to attend. And the rest of it was pretty much free time. Um, but I, I don't think that the system itself wanted to be meant as free time, but I think it was time that is meant to learn and experience uh, and, and do some research. So in a way, how I interpreted was that I was taught how to think rather than taught what to think. And I was really able to awake my sleeping intellects. What actually took you to New Zealand to study in the first place? The first reason was um, because I had family there, so um, it was uh, easy to have a place to stay. The second was, I think, comparatively speaking, um, the tuition fee was more affordable. And third, it was because I wanted to study accounting um, and I was told that uh, accounting system, uh, accounting studies in New Zealand University, Victoria University is um, one of the best in the world. So it sort of, everything fall into places. So here I come. Do you agree? Was it one of the best in the world? Accounting will always be accounting, but it's the way it was taught uh, that was interesting and, and it's, it's a package of all this. You had studied at school in, in France. Why did you not stay in that part of the world? I really like Paris, um, but it was a bit far from home and I wanted somewhere closer. The other thing that I also realised was that if I want to come back to Cambodia, I needed English. Um, that my French was, it was, it's a very beautiful language, but if I were to come back to Asia or ASEAN as it is, I, I need to learn English. I have to go to a place where English is the, uh, the language taught at the in, in universities. Did anything in your New Zealand education help equip you for 
what you do in your job today and influence you in the way you do that job? As I mentioned earlier, is the way the, the system or the, 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 the university taught me how to think rather than what to think and that's really affect how I manage my staff. I don't impose my views on them, like in New Zealand a professor would not impose their view on a student, but they are free to uh, bring out their own thinking. Um, I mean, the professor might want to challenge you, but it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It's all up to what sort of argument you can bring about to your positions. So that somehow, I, I mean, I, I apply it uh, back in, in my, um, my uh, work um, in, in managing myself and that's been working very well because it's more um, empowering for my staff too. What advice would you have to any young Cambodian considering studying in New Zealand? I would say that I studied accounting and at that time Cambodia needed just anyone who has been educated. At this stage, I think we can be a bit more selective on what kind of skill we need for the country. And I've been observing there's a lot of accountants and finance, and, but there's not enough engineers, there's not enough architects, there's not enough uh, scientists. Um, those are the skill that is needed for the country. And I think in New Zealand, um, what it could probably offer in terms of education, apart from accounting, which is an excellent place to study. I think New Zealand is very strong in tourism studies, very strong in agriculture. I can see a lot of similarities in terms of Cambodia is also, I mean, tourism is one of our main source of incomes and source of growth, and so is agriculture. Uh, so that's, that is something that I, I think Cambodian students can learn from New Zealand, not just in the classroom, but also what they, are, they can observe in the street or in different events they attend, and also the people. And I, I find the Kiwi one of the most uh, friendly people in the world. So you would have no hesitation in recommending it as a place to study? Oh, I would, I would send my children there myself. So I, I, they already told that their next step will be New Zealand. Oh, yeah. we look forward to that. Sarai, thanks very much. It's really Thank great you. to hear from you. Thank you.